we are going to start our sequences and series unit. And we'll start that with the definition of a sequence. It says an infinite sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers, the function values a1, a2, a3, a4, and on and on and on and on. It says our terms of the sequence. So an infinite sequence is one that has terms that start at one and go on forever. If the domain consists of the first n positive integers only, the sequence is then a finite sequence. So finite means only a certain amount of terms, like the first five terms or the first 10 terms or the last six terms. The infinite sequence would be a sequence that goes on forever with infinite amount of terms. You've seen equations like this before. Um, we're just using different notations. So we're going to use all that knowledge that we have of linear equations and quadratic equations, cubic, and so on, to discuss these sequences. It says write the first five terms of each sequence. So here is our e sequence, a of n, sub n, and that n means what term value that is, is equal to 2n plus 1. So if I want the first five terms, I would find a1. And I would do that by plugging in the one for the n. So I get two times one plus one, which is equal to three. I would then do the same thing to find the second term. I would plug in a two, and that gives me five. Then I find the third term by plugging in three. Two times three is six, plus one is seven. The fourth term, I would plug in a four. And that gives us nine. And then our fifth term, I plug in a five. And that gives us 11. So now we have found the first five terms of our sequence. We put that in brackets. So that's the set of these values. And I would separate them by commas. So three, five, seven, nine, and 11. Those are the first five terms of this sequence. Let me go ahead and do a couple more with you just so you can see how that works. On this second one here, we have negative one half to the n power. Again, to find our first term, I take negative, I'm sorry, positive one, and I plug it in the place of the n. So I get negative one half to the one power, which is negative one half. For my second term, I'm going to do negative one half to the second power. Order of operations tells us to do the exponent first. So one half squared is one fourth times a negative is a negative one fourth. I continue doing the same thing, plugging in each term value to find our terms. So I'm gonna plug in three, that's one half times one half times one half, which is one eighth. And then times a negative gives me a negative one eighth. Eight to the fourth, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get one half to the fourth power. That's going to give me negative one sixteenth. And a to the fifth, I would get negative one half to the fifth power. That gives us negative one over 32. And so our set is negative one half, negative one fourth negative one eighth, negative one sixteenth, and negative one over 32. So we just saw a linear sequence. We are seeing an exponential one here. Um, this would be a rational one, and so would that one. So go ahead and try. Actually, I'll do one more with you guys. Um, for this one here, I would plug in a one for the n, and so I get negative one over two times one minus one. That gives me a negative one on top. Two minus one is one, which is a negative one. For my second term, I'm going to do the same thing and plug in a two for the n. That gives me negative one over four minus one, which is three. Um, if you put these in the calculator, keep in mind that you want to put the exact value. And for some reason, students think the exact value is different than what teachers think exact value is. Here we have um, a negative one third. 
putting down point, point three, 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 repeating is not an exact value. Negative one over three, that's an exact value. So you wanna leave that fraction. Um, the decimal is an approximation. This is an exact value. Same thing with the square roots. When you do like the square root of a number, you wanna leave it as the square root. That's the exact value. If you find the decimal approximation, um, that would not be the exact value. All right, so we'll continue going here. I plugged in a three now for my n, so I get negative one in my numerator. Two times three is six, minus one is five. Now I've got my two times four, which is eight minus one is seven. And then for our last one, we plug in a five. And so the set here would be negative one, negative one third, negative one fifth, negative one seventh, and negative one ninth. Now go ahead and pause the video and try and do number four, come up with the um, first five terms because that's definitely gonna be on the test and then check your work. All right, so we got the set two, one, two thirds, one half and two fifths. So that's how you get the terms of a sequence. Most of the time we're gonna be asking for um, four, five or six terms. So you have to be able to get those first four or five or six terms of a sequence. All right, now we're gonna work backwards. It tells us to write a formula that generates the sequence. And you wanna look for patterns such as n squared and n cubed. A lot of the sequence series come from those patterns. And so what we're saying by that, if you think about n, that's the four, we've got one, two, three, four, and five. So n squared would be one, four, nine, 16, and 25. And cubed would be 1, 8, 27, 64, and 125. You could go even further, but those are patterns that you're going to want to get comfortable looking for. All right, so we'll start with this first one. And again, this is stuff that you've done in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 before. We're just kind of putting it together with some new notation. So we've got the terms here, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. The first thing I would want to do is find our differences. You want to check for linear, quadratic, or um, cubic. Those are the easiest ones to check first. Um, 5 minus 2 gives me 3. 8 minus 5 gives me 3. 11 minus 8 gives me 3. 14 minus 11 is 3. And 17 minus 14 is 3. We have found that the first differences are constant. So we know this is a linear pattern. If the second differences are this constant, then it's gonna be quadratic. If the third differences are constant, then it's going to be cubic. Now, this constant difference is our slope with linear. So we've moved forward on that part. So I know my slope is going to be three. Now to find this y-intercept, this is my first term here. This is my second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, and sixth term. So in order to find my y-intercept, I would go one term back. And so since we're adding three this way, I would subtract three and that would give me negative one as my y-intercept. You can't always check these by putting them into your y equals in your calculator to see those terms. So I can do three X minus one, and then I can hit second graph and go to the table. And my first term is two, my second term is five, my third term, eight, 11, and so on. So I know I've written the correct um, equation. Another way of doing that, if we had a N equals three to the N, we already knew that because we had found that constant, I can do plus C, and then I can plug in this first one. So my one is the term number. So I'm gonna put that in in the place of N. And my value is two. That's what the term is at one. 
And so I would subtract the three to get it to the other side and C is equal to negative one. So that is one way using the table and one way using the equation. All right, we're gonna try another one here. We have two, negative five, 10, negative 17. Oh, sorry, we didn't finish this problem. It said find A of 20. Now that I've got this equation, I can use the equation. I plug in the 20 for my N. And so we get 60 minus one, which is 59. All right, for this one here, um, since there is a positive and a negative, positive and a negative, we're gonna come back on how to get that to be um, one positive, one negative. So we're gonna start by ignoring the negative. Just to find the pattern and then we'll come back to that. The difference here would be three, the difference here would be five and the difference there is seven. So this one is not a linear pattern since there's not a constant first difference. Now, when I check our second differences, those are constant, it's two. This tells me it is a quadratic or N squared pattern. Now to come up with the rest of that pattern, if I think about my first term here is two. Well, one squared we know is one. Two squared is four, three squared is nine, and four squared is 16. So hopefully you recognize those are each one value below it. So our pattern would be n squared plus one. So my term is one squared is one plus the one gives me the two. Two squared is four plus the one gives me the five. Now we need to talk about making it a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative. In order to do that, there's a little setup. To make that second term negative, we do a negative one raised to the n minus one power. What that's going to do is take my first term here. I would put that in and one minus one is zero. So anything to the zero power is one. But for my second term, it's gonna be two minus one, which is one and negative one to the first power would be negative one. So that's gonna multiply and give me this. So our formula is going to be negative one to the n minus one times n squared plus one. That's gonna make all of those even ones come out with the negative value here that will multiply times our term. If it started with a negative, you can't see that. If it started with a negative, you use the negative one to the n power because then it's going to start making that negative one the very first term instead of subtracting that one. So for other patterns, the ones that start with a negative, you would do the negative one to the n power. For the second term to be negative, then we use this one here. All right, now that we have that equation, we can find A of 12. I get negative one to the 12 minus one times 12 squared plus one. So this is 144 plus one, which is 145. Here we get 12 minus one, which is 11. And we know that odd numbers, then the negative is gonna come out. So that's gonna be a negative. All right, we got two more back here to try. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, number eight and show you that one. Then I'll let you guys try this one and you can pause the video and check your work. With this one here, the difference between three and 10 is seven. 
then 19, and then 37, then 61. So we know it's not linear since those are not constant. We find our second differences. And so that is 12, 18, and 24. Once again, we do not have a constant second difference, so we know it's not quadratic. I check my third differences, and it is six and six. My third differences are constant. So that is, that means it is a cubic or n cubed pattern. So that's what we're gonna to use to set up this equation. Now, since this is my first term, my second term, third, fourth, and fifth, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, and five cubed is 125. So hopefully you notice that these are all two more than the cubes. So our equation would be n cubed plus two. So there's the formula for our sequence. Now we would want to figure out what a of 25 is. This one we're going to want to use the calculator for. We're going to cube. 25, and there it is, 15,627. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try this one, and then come back to check to see if you got it correct. All right, check your work. You should have gotten the pattern to be A sub N is equal to N cubed plus one. And then you should have found A sub seven to be 344. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit more about these patterns. It tells us here for the definition of the series, we're gonna consider the infinite series, the one that goes on forever. And then we're going to consider the finite series as well. So the sum of the first n terms of the sequence is called the finite series or the nth partial sum of the sequence and is denoted by this right here. This notation, the sigma notation is for summation. And so this one here would say one would be our um, starting point and that is called the index of summation. And then this top part here would be the top of our summation, the highest one. And then this would be the sequence right here. Again, that's for one that is a finite, so it has a certain amount of terms. In this case, it started A1, A2, A3, and so on up to the AN, and we would add each one together. That's what this symbol tells you to add them. Um, so it's considered the partial sum. Now the sum of all the terms in an infinite sequence is called an infinite series and is denoted by this right here. So it's going up to infinity since it goes on forever. All right, so again, with that summation, the sum of the first n terms of a sequence is represented with that um, notation there. We've got the sigma starting at one, going to n of this sequence. We would add each one of those terms together. The i is called the index of summation. N is the upper limit of summations and one is the lower limit of the summations. And that sounds really complicated, but it's really not that complicated. So we're gonna start with one here so you can see how that works. We've got I being one. So our starting point is one and our final one is four. So this is the same thing as a1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. We're going to add our first four terms together. Um, each term we find, we know by putting that one in there. So I would put in a one to find that first term. So I get four times one plus one. There's my A1. For my A sub two, I'm gonna plug in a two there. So I get four times two plus one. 
For the three, I will get four times three plus one. And for the four, I will get four times four plus one. Our first term is then five. Our second term is nine. Our third term is 13 and our fourth term is 17. And that's what we're adding together. So our summation or our fourth partial sum, that's the way we'd say that because there's four terms. So the fourth partial sum of this sequence is 44. Here's a second example. So we would do A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5. And so our first one is gonna be two plus one cubed. Our second one would be two plus two cubed. Our third one is two plus three cubed. Two plus four cubed and two plus five cubed. So there's all of our terms. You can use a calculator for this part to figure them out, but our first term would be 10, our second one would be 29, 66, and 127. All right, I'm gonna show you that on the calculator now. So 10 plus 29 plus 66 plus 127, that is 232. Now, there's a reason why I just showed you that on the calculator. That's because I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put this in the calculator with the sigma notation as well. So we're going to hit alpha window. And we're going to go to the second one for summation. And it looks just like it does on our paper here. So we're going to have to plug in what we want. So this starts at one. So our first value is going to be one. Now in the calculator, we usually use X. So I'm going to put an X and a one on the bottom. That tells me that's my lower limit. That's what I started with. And I wanna go all the way up to five on this one. So five is gonna be my final term so that we can find the fifth partial sum. And then I'm gonna put in my equation. So two plus X raised to the third power. So now that I have that in there, I can hit enter. Whoops. What did I plug in incorrectly before? Okay, one second, let me figure that out. Figured it out, forgot the three right up in the front here, the two plus one. So that is a three, which comes out to 235. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so if we went and took this first one, we only added four terms there. If we would have added the fifth term, then we would get the 235. So your calculator does do this work um, by doing that sigma notation as well. Again, that's at alpha window summation, which is the second one. And I'll go ahead and plug this one in so that you can see that. And notice that we have a four outside here. So this would be four times this summation. So I would put in the summation like, not, like normal, I would do X is equal to one. The five is gonna be my final term. And then here we've got two times X, which is the sequence, that would be 30. So this is equal to four times 30, which is 120. So that's using some of that notation. Um, we'll go a little bit deeper with this. It says use Sigma to write the sum for the sequence here. In order to do that, I have my sigma here. I know that I'm starting with my first term, so I've got that part, but I need the formula for the sequence to go right here, and I need our top um, term to go on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure that out here. I notice that three is on the top of all of these, so I know that three is going to be in the numerator. Now I need to find the pattern that's going on in the bottom here. And so that is one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, and so on. So I know the bottom is going to be N squared. So now I've got my formula for the sequence that goes right here. The final thing I need is our top limit right here. 
So I need to figure out what number term this is so that I can see how many terms are going to be in this. Since this was one, two, three, four, and then so on up to this point. Now, 121 is 11 squared. So I know this is the 11th term. So we need the 11th partial sum. So we're gonna put an 11 there. And that would be our sigma to write the sum of the sequence. All right. I'll show you another thing here with that. For the series here, this is an infinite one. So it's got infinity up at the top and we wanna find the third partial sum and the total infinite sum. So let's think through that real quick. I'm gonna start with that third partial sum. That means I'm gonna start at one and I'm going to end at three. My first one, when I put one right here, I get three over 10. For my second one, I get three over 10 squared, which is 100. And for my third one, I'm gonna get three over 10 cubed, which is 1,000. Now, if I was to go ahead and put this in the calculator, I would get 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 which is 0.333. Well, if we think about this going to infinity, now, using what we just saw there, as I'm going up, I'm moving one more digit with 333. So the infinite one would have to be 33 repeating, which we know is one third. So that's going to be my total infinite sum. All right. A second way of defining a sequence is to assign a value to the first or the first few terms and specify the nth term by a formula or equation that involves one or more of the terms preceding it. Sequences defined this way are said to be defined recursively. And the rule of formula is called a recursive formula. So A1 is the first term, A sub n is the current term, and A sub n minus one means the previous term. A sub n minus two means two terms before the current term in the sequence and so on. So the formulas that we've used up to this point are explicit formulas. Now we're gonna talk about recursive formulas. So it says, um, write the first five terms of the following recursive formula. So here we go. It tells us that A1 is one. So that's going to be what we're starting. And A sub n is gonna be two times our previous. So that's what that means there. A n is gonna be two times the previous. So A1 is equal to one. A2 would be equal to two times my previous, which is one. So that's gonna be two. Now, when I get to A3, it is again going to be two times the previous. Well, the new previous is two. So this would be four. And so then when I go to my fourth term, I would do two times my previous, which is now four. And when I go to my fifth, I get two times my previous, which is eight. So that's going to be 16. So this one is a basic recursive. It wasn't that difficult to use the one before. There's some that do get a little bit tricky and we'll talk a little bit more about those. Um, but you are starting with the one they gave you, and then you're going to use the formula and always use the previous term, because that's what this means right here, the previous. All right, so let's look at another one here. It tells us that a1 is equal to negative 2. Now, our new function, a sub n here, is going to be the previous plus 3. 
That's what that means there, previous plus three. So A2 is going to be our previous, which is negative two plus three, which is one. For my third term, I'm going to use the previous, which is one plus three, which is four. My previous, which is four plus three is seven. And for my last one, I use the previous plus three, which is equal to 10. So again, the first formulas we used were considered explicit. These are considered recursive on the quiz and the test. You'll be asked to write recursive ones and explicit ones. So you wanna check which one you're writing and how you're writing them. All right, we'll look at one more harder one and then I'll let you guys pause and try one. So in this case here, we have A1 is one and A2 is equal to three. So they gave us the first two terms already. Now our formula, which is this part here, says A sub N minus two. So that's the two previous ones. So second previous minus two times the previous. So for A3, the second previous would be this one minus two times the previous one, which is three. This one gets tricky. So we've got one minus six, which is negative five. Now we start again with this fourth and two previous. Well, two previous would be the three now. Minus two times my previous one, which is negative five. And so that's negative 10 right there. So three, I'm sorry, positive 10. So three plus 10 is 13. And then a to the fifth would be two previous. So that's negative five minus two times my previous, which is 13. And that gives us negative 31. You might even start setting up this set so that you can see the terms um, listed out. It might make it a little bit easier. All right, if you'll go ahead and pause so that you could do 18 and then just check your work. All right, go ahead and check your work. That's what you should have gotten right there. I do like writing out this formula, so if it helps you out, it's two times the second previous plus the previous. That sometimes helped me keep my mind straight on which one is which on these. Thanks for watching.